Hello and welcome to the Shut Up and Sit Down 2020 2020 2023 gift guide extravaganza Whamapalooza video. We have got an entire pile of games We've to got use. so many games. In it's, a variety too many. of different categories. Three categories. Ding. Fun for families. Ding. Uh, games for uh, gamers. And number three, put them in your stuffing, put stocking. Them, stuff oh. them in your, stuff them in. Matthew, tell us about Spots. Spots is a delightful game of pushing your luck with some incredibly delightful dogs. It's got really good dogs. Amazing dogs. They hired an artist that specifically just did dogs. Really? Yes. They only do dogs? Pretty much. There was an artist Small, online that like, they're really good at doing dogs. So they're like, get that person. Small dogs, big, big dogs, dogs, big dice. Some as big as your dog. The way it works is you get these dog cards, you roll dice, and then you have to match the dice dots spots on the dogs. He said the name of the game. Dogs have spots. And dice then have spots. you basically keep pushing your luck to try and fill as many dog cards as you can mm. all at once. But obviously, if you go bust, then you're ruined. You can get little bones that allow you to have re-rolls, and there's different changeable cards that you can activate as powers, which means sometimes in games you have like tons of re-roll bones, and then you get to watch as somebody re-rolls 20 times and still doesn't get the three that they need. Beautiful. It's beautiful, hubris, cute dogs. It's simple, very fun, highly recommended. I was going to ask for three words that describe spots, but you, you did like six Simple, there. fun, highly recommended. Dogs. Dogs. You've played dogs. Now it's time for cats. Oh, do I have to put a cat and a dog in my stocking You stuff? have to put a cat in a dog in a box. That's like a taducan, it's but a bit of a, really illegal. It's a crime. This game is a trick-taking game. You've played trick-taking games before, but the thing that's clever about this one mm -hmm. is that none of the cards have colors. Nope. They are all blank. And you just say what color they are when you play them. You go, this is the five of red. Yeah. You put it on the table, which already makes it a pretty brain-melting trick-taking game. But you add to that a weird little area control mechanism. Yeah. Which just it, makes it completely crazy. It's conceptually hellish in the fact yeah. that you, you keep pretending that your cards are whatever you think they are mm -hmm. until suddenly it's impossible for that five to be anything other than a blue five and you realise you're ruined. Yeah, you realise that you've completely goosed it. The thing about this game that I think is actually really neat is the fact that it sounds unbelievably complicated when you try and explain it because yep. it is literally like Schrodinger's cat, the card game. Yes, exactly. And it's actually not very complicated. It's but really it simple. It makes you feel really clever. It makes you feel smart. Because you're doing something that feels like it should be melting yeah. your brain. Yeah, I completely agree. I really like the way that the manual in this one has got like, it looks like a sort of confidential science document yep. Yep. that teaches you about this crazy cat and that the got score stuck card. in a box. The scorecard that you use to mark how, who's winning in the games and how many points you've got is like tests, it's like laboratory testing things. The which is a little clipboard of like, it's, you're not marking down your score, you're marking down laboratory findings. Mm -hmm. which is fun, it's a fun little thing to do with Schrodinger's cat. And uh, that's that's that. That's a stocking stuffer number two. I'm Stuff. getting better at saying it now. Stocking a stuffers. Mm. My gold. Mine. 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 This is the simplest game, probably out of the whole bunch that we've got here, or one of the simplest. Mm -hmm. It's for children. Yep. And adults. Yep. It's for anyone. My gold. Mine. My gold. Mine. It's a game about being little dwarfs inside of a cave trying to get gold. Yep. Uh, this is really similar to a game called Diamant that mm -hmm. we have always been espousing the good qualities of or ink and gold. Mm -hmm. That game isn't available very often. Right. This is the closest alternative in terms of vibes that we could find. And I actually think I might prefer it. No like, way. I, don't, I don't know, like Diamond is, is fun, but there's something about the pure simplicity of this of, do you want to get out of the cave before the dragon <laughs> gets you, or are you gonna try and hang around while the dragon visibly moves closer and closer yes, towards you? Yes, yes. It's much more like knowable. That's true, way. that's true. It has a very visible dragon threat that's slowly creeping towards you for the whole game, and maybe you'll push your friend into it. And sometimes the dragon just runs out of you of nowhere and it's not fair and yeah. that's games, but often, uh, pushing other people closest to the dragon whilst you try and run away with the gold. It's just funny. It's like the perfect pub game. Great little tiny game for Christmas. Put them in your socks. How big are my socks, Tom? How, how many more things are you going to put into my socks? I'm going to put this one into what? your sock. Apparently this is in our stocking stuffer category. You have to cut that in half and put it into <laughs> two different socks. Depends how large your feet are. Yeah. Depends how large you want your feet to someday be. If you're slipping into a pair of aspirational socks, <laughs> then Trek 12 Himalaya is the perfect game for you. Yeah, reignite the aspiration of your feet <laughs> with this. Uh, it's a great little roll and write. Um, okay. We won't spend too long on this. We'll have some little B-roll footage of it playing now. 
I've not played this game, Tom. It's and good. You played it a while ago, right? It's really good. It's a game about basically you're trying to climb a little mountain. Uh -huh. You'll be slowly linking these little numbers together as you go up and up and up and up. But sometimes you won't be able to put the numbers in the right place. It's classic roll and write stuff. But here's the thing that makes it a little bit more, a little bit special, a little bit more enticing, right? Is that it has some little mini expansions in the box that only come out when someone does like a cool feat. So like when someone climbs the mountain in the sickest way possible, then they get to open up a little envelope and they get to write their name in the record book. And inside the envelope is an air horn. <laughs> Mind bug. Tell me about this one, man. Mind bug. We played this together. We did play this together. And we, we liked it. We liked it. I liked so it much that we're putting it in this video. Yes, weird. It's a <laughs> game by Andrew Garfield, inventor of Magic the Gathering. And, and Garfield. And Garfield. Mm -hmm. And lasagna. And mm. Mondays. He's done a lot. Um, most notably in recent years, he worked on Keyforge, which was a game that was a fun, collectible game, and then they broke the algorithm that allowed them to make it, and uh, things have happened, <sighs> and now it's back in different form. Games are weird. Anyway, the way this works is basically you both have a deck of cards that you're playing with, but you have a mind bug card that allows you, at some point, everybody has mind bugs, mm -hmm. and at some point the other player is going to play a card that you don't like, and rather than going, no, you can't use that card, you go, mind bug. That card is now mine. I would like that compost dragon, please. All of the characters in it and all of the artworks, you've got an owl spider, you've got weird chameleons with a, with it's a, a chameleon party popper. It's no, a chameleon it's a sniper. The art's great, the theming is fun, it's wacky, it's weird. And for me, I think it gives you like the entire experience of playing like, a, you know, Keyforge, but without having to collect decks and make decks, you just sit down one little box and have a wild back and forth, which we found had a surprisingly nice amount mm. of tactics in it. Yeah. A nice amount of trying to bait other players into mind-bugging something, thinking that it's the best card you've got in your hand. When it is not. It's a silly game, but it's not like crazy silly. It's yes. not like completely random and bonkers. It's actually got a lot of thought into it. It's not like it. Flux. Yeah, and you've already got like- Or another awful game like that. <laughs> I think your deck is like 10 cards in this yeah. game or something yeah. like that. So it's like, it's quick as well. It's quick. Real speedy. It's weird, but it's not weird in an obnoxious way. Mm. And it's tight and fun. And also it's tiny. Yeah, I mean, I like these big, you can, like, put, you can put that in your big socks. I can fit this into my socks without irreversibly, irreversibly damaging them, I yes, think. Without needing for darning. Mm. Hey, are any of these games today for sale, Tom? Or startups. Or startups. Correct. <laughs> you want to play business. some game about making money. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> then play both of You're a YouTuber. You've got YouTuber salary. I've been running this business for 10 years. <laughs> I need help. For Sale is a classic tiny little auction game that should be in basically everyone's collection. It's really good. It's really quick. So it's really good. So it's really silly. You, you do an auction for money and then you do an auction for the houses. Other way using around. the money. You yeah, do it. it doesn't matter. You have little fistfuls of coins yep. and you buy houses with them and then you have to sell those houses for more money. For the money. But you, you do two auctions, it's kind of weird and unknowable. I don't like auction games, but I like this one because mm. it feels like it's more about vibes than anything else. <laughs> and uh, I'm really good at it as well. Oh, well, that's, so, that's, a, that's a bonus. Startups is, I don't know why I lump these two together, but it's a little, another tiny little business game about investment. Mm. It's not really about auctioning. I don't know why I put them together. Startups is- They're just similar is, weights and they're small and they've got money in them. Startups is, Absolutely sick. It's classic. It's, it's look at that. It's like a hot pink and, and green box. Mm -hmm. And you've got all these different companies and it's basically people just investing in different ones, trying to get them up, up, taken off, trying to get like the best value out of companies, but you're all doing the same thing with different companies. Yep. It's so simple. It's fast. The art is cool as heck. Yeah, the art's really cool. All the little cool. fictional companies. Minimal minimalist mm -hmm. and delightful. We put this in our Oink Games top 10 Oink Games video. Uh, and I think it was like close to number one, if not number one. I it's up there, isn't it's it? It's really up there. Now it's in the trilogy got... of great oinks, isn't it? Now they've got Scout, which got Scout. should be here actually. Oh yeah, that's We forgot true. to put it here. We'll Photoshop Scout in exactly here. Seamless. Seamless. But yeah, Scout and this, they're probably the two best oinks. They absolutely are. Oink, yeah. oink. Oink, oink. That's the small games category finished, Matt. I'm going to put these in my socks right now. But wait, there's three more games. Because I, I, I brought some surprise extra bonus games that I didn't tell you about before. I love surprises. I'm going to run through these real quickly. Firstly, Sale. It's a two-player trick-taking game. It has vibes like The Crew, 
it's very good. Me and Quinn's talked about that on a podcast. You can see the number of the podcast here because I've forgotten what the number was. Next up, Splendor Duel, another two player game. We've got a two two for two for two player here. Two for two for two for two. You like, I'm holding this upside down. You like Splendor, mm -hmm. right? It's a game about efficiently making people happy. Gems? Yeah, it's got gems in it. Ding, 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 you got that right. That's how you make people happy. This is a two player version of that game. Emily did a great review of it on her own channel. Mm -hmm. We'll link to that somewhere. Yep. It's great. Uh, it's a good little game. It's lovely, it's delightful, it's really good for two players. I believe you. Finally, not for two players, Nana. Which has been... <laughs> is it about bananas? No, it is not. This has been reprinted... Is it about nans? Grandmas? No, come on! It's been reprinted or reimagined as Trio. Uh, so you can get it there if you can't get this version. This is the import version, which is a little bit more expensive than if you were to buy Trio. I can't remember who that's by. Trio we'll that slash somewhere. Nana. Trio slash Nana. I'm going to show you the art because you'll like it. This is basically like a mixture between... It's not going to be grandmas or bananas. So it's not going to be grandmas I don't know or about bananas. That. It's aminals. Mm. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look at these animals. So this is a, basically this is a mix between Go Fish and something else. It's a memory game right. essentially. You 360 ask... no scope me an animal. Okay, let's do it. Sheep. They're quite cute. They're quite cute. Ready for the next one? Yeah, next one. I'm not going to no scope this one. I'm going to show you it because it's great. All right, okay. Pigs. Pigs. And look, they're golden because they're the best. Yeah, that's that's good. They Finally. Little gold. Uh, yeah, I like the pigs. All right. Monkey. That's a gorilla. It's a monkey. That's a gorilla. Is a gorilla not a monkey? No. No? I don't think it is. Oh. One of us is going to be in trouble with YouTube. Off-screen Amber is shaking her head yeah, off Off-screen off Amber? No. Thank you. Hedgehog. Hedgehog. All right, I'm in. Okay. Sold. Good. It's good. It's really good. Get me a Nana. Very good for four players. It's the kind of game you could teach to anyone, even your Nana. <laughs> So that's all of the stocking things. I'm going to put these to one side so I can put them into my socks later. And now it's time for category number two. It's family time. Oh dear. Ah! What are you doing? I'm whirring us up for another hot category in this exciting video. It looked like you were sort of reeling in a family here. I am, I'm reeling in a family. Here they it, come. It's a classic Whoa. dance floor move where you pull an entire family towards you. And then you dance with them all individually. You dance with them all individually, put them in a net and then take them home and sell them for their best market price as freshly picked families. Cascadia? Yes. It's a game. And what a game. This and is a game of animals and locations that animals like to be in. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely little tile laying puzzle where you make some habitats for your animals and then you put animals on those habitats and you want to get all your eagles in a line, all your salmons in a slalom, all your bears in a huddle. And if you do that the best, then you're going to win. <laughs> huddle them bears. Mm -hmm. It's super satisfying putting down little hexes and trying to match them all up so all of you, you have a nice big beach and a nice big lake and a nice big forest. It's very gentle. It's very nice. Very, very gentle. It's a really good family game for the sort of families who want something that isn't mean. Because a lot of families yes. over Christmas times, they want to really like tear each other to pieces in Monopoly. They want to, you know, like absolutely shoot each other down in trivial pursuit. They just want to wrestle, really, but they're just, they're just not being honest about it. They're just and cowards. They're trying to find other mediums to get that out. And so it doesn't work as well as wrestling. Just wrestle. Just wrestle. So Cascadia is like the, for the family who doesn't want that. It's for yeah. the family who wants to chill out, relax. You know, they've eaten a giant turkey yeah, together. It's... And now they're going to revel in nature. <laughs> <laughs> That tickled me. <laughs> Cascadia, nice. It's good. There's also an expansion for Cascadia called Landmarks. Mm. It adds landmarks. Interesting. Mm. It should be it's nice and it's out now. You can get it. If you, if you like your Cascadia, you could, or if you have a family member who already has Cascadia, get them the expansion. Do it. Really in another one now. What have we got next in the uh, family zone? From, and this one is actually from the ocean. Oh, it stomped the plank. You can smell the sea air on it already. That's not sea air, and I apologise. That's asbestos. This is Stomp the Plank. Mm -hmm. I love this game. I love this game an awful lot. It's basically a game where, well, well you know what? I'm just going to show, show you really easily, because basically the box itself becomes a boat. Oh, I never perform well under pressure. <laughs> there we are, look. So we got these, and you got these, and you got planks, and then you flip it all over, and then basically... <laughs> These just you go are on there. An absolute mess of this and look table. At that. Fantastic. That's pretty much the game setup. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's slightly messier than usual. And then effectively, all you've got to do is try and push your luck by flipping over cards. And if you go too far, then you have to walk your elephant down the planker space. How far can he go? Well, One. who knows? Because the other thing you can do is you can stop pushing your luck at any point and put some discs on the end. Mm -hmm. And on the end of every other bird's these planks. You can weigh them down. So effectively, it's half dexterity game, half push your luck. And at any point, you can keep going and keep flipping cards. And if you get six cards that are all unique, you just win the game. Yeah. So there's always that temptation to be like, 
well, I could just keep going and win the game. Mm -hmm. It's ostensibly meant for little kids, but it's very fun with uh, open-minded or drunk adults. <laughs> I recently, <laughs> uh, I bought two copies of this game when we got it, and I gave one to a five-year-old. Mm -hmm. And five-year-olds are classically a little bit fickle, mm -hmm. but I then saw that five-year-old a couple of months later, and the first thing they said when I came in was, Stop the plank! Which is like, wow, okay. You're Mr. Stop the plank. It's been a hit. So that child, you are, the, you are nothing As, more. They probably think I made it. Yeah. And I'd be happy if that was true. Mm. I recently played a little game called Trap Words. Ooh, Trap Words. With my family. Mm. And I liked it a lot. It's basically uh, like Taboo, if you've ever played Taboo before, the game where you have a card that has a word on it, let's say elephant, yep. and then a list of words that you can't say when describing that word. So you can't say trunk or grey or forget. And Trap Words is a sort of twist on that formula where you are going through this little sort of dungeon. Initially, I was really worried that this game would be a sort of like over fantasy theming of like yeah. what is a really simple game, but it's actually super breezy and super light. Yep. Essentially, you're going through this little dungeony cavey thing, but you are writing clues or you're writing the the words that you are not allowed to say. You write those for the other team. Yes. So like they're gonna have to describe lighthouse, and you can get rid of like the word shore and ship. And then when they're describing it, you're waiting, going, oh please say it. And then when they yeah. do, your whole team goes, yeah. Yes. It's, it's delightful. So you're trying to basically get people to say words they're not supposed to say. Yes, exactly. And yeah, that's it. It makes Taboo into sort of more of an active sort of game. One way it feels you're... like, it feels kind of decrypto-y as well, of yes. being like really trying to get inside people's heads and being clever about like, what can we do that's mm. gonna force them into this horrible hole? The thing is always like, if let's go with that like, and say like it was elephant, right? They, they, the other team has assumed that you've written things like grey and trunk and forget. So you're there thinking, well, what's the next layer yep. of things that they're going to try and guess through? Ooh, yeah, feisty. Yeah. Good yeah. little game. And there's all these weird modifications as well, like around where everyone just has to close their eyes. Yep. Which doesn't make much sense, but it's quite funny. Yeah. Everyone just shouting things out in the dark. It's good. It's a good little game, Trap Words. I like it. A lot. And now over to our foreign correspondent, Emily. All the way in Australia, she's got the Christmas games that you gotta play. Next Station London is a whole lot of fun tricky puzzle inside such a cute little box. I originally reviewed it as a solo game at which it is amazing, but that experience can be taken up to four players, making it a perfect gift for family fun. The game has you competing to create your own subway network across London, flipping over cards with destinations on them that you'll have to incorporate into your line by drawing on your map with these cute little coloured pencils. And while this doesn't sound too tricky on the surface, the game challenges you to make it more difficult with its various scoring conditions that ask you to spread and entangle these lines that otherwise cannot cross. Then lets you make the game even more juicy by adding these challenge and pencil power cards that shake up the game, giving you more scoring opportunities and fun new reasons to make your network a godforsaken hellscape. I've been going to it pretty much non-stop since I got it months ago. It feels light enough and comforting enough to just pick up and play at any point, while also having enough challenge to make you want to come back and try for a higher score. I really like it. If you know someone or you and your family love the feeling of sitting down and solving a jigsaw puzzle together, Dwarf Romantic, the board game, captures that feeling so well and amplifies it in so many different ways. You're picking up these tiles with different landscapes on them and adding them to an ever-growing village of your creation. Your main aim is to complete these challenges that ask you to make certain sized areas out of the different features, scoring you points. While that's the aim, you aren't locked into connecting these features, with the exception of rivers and railways, giving it a freeform feel that's incredibly relaxing. There's also no way to lose, just encouraging you to go for higher scores to progress through its campaign, which will unlock new tiles and challenges for you to explore. This makes it great to play as a family, as it's entirely cooperative and it has almost no real stakes. It's just such a fun, cozy experience where you get to work together to build these little towns and unlock all sorts of goodies along the way. It's really good. Thanks for that, Emily. And now back to this. Was that good? I don't know. <laughs> The final game in our family extravaganza. Don't get what? Don't get got. It's us. It's our game. Yeah, we, we, we made this. We made this. Quinn's did a lot of the writing on it though, and mm -hmm. he had a lot of fun testing this game in which you have to try and do silly things mm -hmm. in increasingly odd ways without anyone noticing that you're doing something odd. Like getting a player to ask to see your ID 
and then you show them the card instead. Yep. It's a thing that you put into a sort of regular social situation and turn it maybe a little bit cursed, yes. but also quite fun. Like invent a new catchphrase, get another player to use it. And yep. the third example in here is boo something and get another player to join in. Yep. It's a game that you play over a period of maybe days mm -hmm. and Effectively, you're just trying to get other people to engage in odd things. Odd behavior. But if at any point they go, hang on a minute, is hang this on. is this, this is the, game? the game? Is this part of the game? Then they you've caught them out. But if and they don't do that, then they got got. They got got. Get them before they get you. Some people think this is one of the most electric and exciting things that you can do within <laughs> a social circle. <laughs> social situation. I personally find it far too anxiety inducing <laughs> to play for longer than about two hours. But your mileage varies. And honestly, it is very, very exciting. It is. It's, it's kind of perfect for Christmas if you find Christmas boring. Yeah. Because suddenly, like, every interaction you have with your aunt is going to become a fraught tactical minefield. It's going to become very <laughs> suspect. <laughs> It's good. It's, it's a good game. Uh, this is our version of it, and there are copies available in the UK. Yes. If you still want to grab them while they are While available. it's still available. While it's still hot. It's not hot. They're quite cold. Well, yeah, but it's, it, but it's still available. It's still available. And it might not be available forever. No, that's true. So this could be the last Christmas. I last gave you my Christmas. Christmas. I, I gave you Christmas Day games. And I gave you Next a day. game, and we Played it went again. away. That's cool. Music. Okay. Surely, Tom, the next fun family like game is War of the Ring, the card game. No, Matt, don't be silly. It's Ra. <laughs> it's not Ra. It's none of these. It's sick of women. We that. tricked you. We're in the new section. <laughs> We're in the Games for Gamers section. And we should probably uh, say here, let's talk about our fallen comrades, the games who did not make it here today because they were too big and heavy and I couldn't be asked. <laughs> Ark Nova is a big old zoo game that me and you did quite like quite a yep. lot. A lot of people love Ark Nova, a very good game to get for the person in your life who likes animals. It's specifically about uh, like animal preservations and reservations yeah. and the uh, weird economies of that. There's something quite nice about the way that it's a zoo game that isn't just like put that animal in the cage. Yeah. It's like study the ecology of the piranha, you know, yeah. it's, it's nice, it's nice. It's got, it's, good, it's got good politics. It's massive. And it's also a fun game and it's also huge. But a very good, uh, crunchy Euro game for the person in your life who likes animals and who likes thinking. Thinking. Uh, the other game that I didn't bring because it was absolutely huge, but is also absolutely brilliant, is Undaunted Stalingrad. We did yeah. a whole review of this. The sort of pinnacle, the zenith uh, of the Undaunted system. It's a game where two players and two players only kill each other over and over and over again, doing a big war. Uh, kind of dry. Well, actually, it's not dry. It's pretty spicy. It's slightly wet. Damp Russian uh -huh. fronts. Damp Russian fronts. That can't, we can't keep that in the video. We can't keep that in the video. We've got a whole review of that if you want to check out why that game is good. And it is really good. We it's really great. recommend it if you've got one person in mind who you want to play a game with. It's sort of like a social contract. If you get your best pal that game for Christmas, you've just bought that game for yourself. Yeah. That's psychopathic, but yep. also true. And I feel like if you want to stop playing a campaign game halfway through with someone who's your best friend, then the only way out of it is probably just to permanently end the friendship. Mm -hmm. So be careful. Be careful what you wish for this Christmas. And finally, there's a reprint of the classic area control war game El Grande. El Grande. Da, 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 da. I thought you were going to go for El Nombre there, which was the, uh, there was a kid's show that I watched when I was very small, which had El Nombre in it. He was like a little mouse with a hat and he'd write numbers in the sand. He was called El Nombre. Anyone remember I El Nombre? Remember El, no El Grande is great. It's a classic. Mm -hmm. It's being reprinted. It looks better. And it's got very little all slash no plastic in the production, which mm. is really great. Because um, they hadn't invented uh, plastic in the 1980s. Exactly. Exactly. Great game. Uh, worth getting. Uh, it looks nice. It's new. It's from Hansim Gluck, which is a publisher name I love saying. Hansim Gluck? Hansim Gluck. That's like something... I think Gluck means like either luck or left. Hands on luck. I'm not good at No, German. left is links. It's luck, then I think. Mm. Hands Lucky. on, hands on luck. Get your hands on that luck. There's a uh, there's a burger restaurant in Essen called Hands in Luck. Mm. Mm. Maybe it means tasty. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't know German. No, that's lecker. Mm. Oh, you know oh. more German than I do. This is embarrassing. But now we can talk about the games that are really here in front the of us. The games that actually made it here. Today. That are on the table. Should we talk about uh, a good little reprint, a classic reprint <sighs> first? It's raw. It's raw. Raw. What is it good 
four. I was thinking like Ra Ra Rasputin. Ra is the sun god of Egypt. No, that's there's something in there, isn't there? There is, but we're not going to find it. Rasputin auction tiles on the Nile. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> you're so close. <laughs> anyway, it's an auction game uh, yeah. about Egyptians and auctioning tiles. Yep. I quite like it, which is strange because I don't like auction games. But You've said that again and twice in this video. I really want people to know. <laughs> Stop this, buying me auction games. It is a it's a cracking game. It's really good. It's maybe my favourite auction game. It's really good. It's by Rainer Knizia. Big K Nizzle. Shout out to the doctor. Shout out to the Kniz. This version's got artwork by Ian O'Toole as mm. well. It looks great. Uh, it's not too expensive, but it's a good luxury little gift mm. to give to your to your friend who likes board games. Or yourself. Treat yourself this Christmas. Moon? Moon. We did a review of this. Or you did a review yeah. of this. Moon is a game that we reviewed quite recently. Moon or no. No. Which way you want to read it. It's just a really tight little box. It's a pick and pass base building game for one to five players. It's wow. Box. Oh, no, I right. said it on the box. Less impressive. Yeah, I, I'm not very good at sentences like that. So effectively what you're doing is you're trying to make your own little moon base. Mm -hmm. You're passing cards around constantly. And it means that whenever you're drafting, you're like, am I? Which of these do I want and which of these will I never see ever again? Mm -hmm. It's fun with three. With two, I think it's the best. Yeah, two, it's, it's real so spicy. It's mean. It's sharp. It's just you're constantly throwing other people's things in the bin mm. and then digging through the bins to try and find the things the other person threw away. <laughs> it's got a slightly kind of cold clinical crap vibe in a good way of like space travel but actually this kind of sucks actually we don't really like it very it's like, much like well done we've made yeah. a hot dog and coffee place on the moon mm. hooray look how far we've come it's got some really lovely tokens it's good. and it's just like ah oh, just everything neatly organized in a tight little box a very satisfyingly rich little thing look at that Oof. it's great it's a good gift and i think that would fit in socks arguably better than some of the other uh, so-called socks stuff we games. could do that right now I mean, I, we, I, could, we could we could get that we could get, get the sock out. Nah. Right War of the Ring, the card game. I reviewed this as well quite recently. You did, and this is a real treat. You can actually get now full fat War of the Ring mm -hmm. as a gift for someone. But gosh, that's a big flipping gift. Are you sure you like Eric that much? I don't know. I don't know. Can we not talk about this now? Okay. This is a really nice little distillation of that idea, though. It plays with two to four, and effectively, what you're doing is you are crunching down the entire of the War of the Ring mm -hmm. into four little decks of cards yeah. that effectively represent the different factions. It's got a really nice flow to it in terms of different things can be played at different parts of the game. And I mean, the Nazgul are kind of really strong at the start and at the end, but in the middle, they're like, where have everybody gone? Because they it went underground. Makes sort of thematic sense if you're a big LOTR head. Mm -hmm. But also, I don't even know who Gandalf is, but I like this game a lot. It's really fun. It's good. It has a, a theme to it, it has a shape to it, and it's sort of stories kind of come out of it. I think it's very different to the full fat game, but if you've got someone in your life who really loves Lord of the Rings stuff, this is solid. Off camera Amber was looking at this game with a real look of suspicion. Off camera Amber, aka off camber, was <laughs> uh, in disbelief about Tom not knowing who Gandalf was. Wizard. You know who Gandalf was. You played him and I killed him. I killed your Gandalf when you played. And then he came back again, as he does. <laughs> and then I killed him again. Games. You got a whole lot of games over there. Oh, uh, you didn't get yes. many games this Christmas, Tom. I, know, I only got two games, but they're great games. They're better than all the other games because these are the ones that I reviewed. That's right, we're talking about Icky and we're talking about Heat Pedal to the Metal. They're not similar. Stop what you're doing with those games. Okay. Uh, Heat is in high demand at the moment. It's fantastic. Yep. It's really good. It's in high demand for good reason. It is a racing game where you're driving little Formula One cars around a track. It's immediate. It's snappy. It's a deck builder. It's great. It plays up to six people, but it works great with four or three. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly just an incredibly good game. It's very, very of good. Just trying to work out how fast you can keep your car going around a corner without causing yourself trouble yep. now and in the future. And I don't even think you need to be like big into like cars no. or racing. Like I don't care about cars. I don't care about racing. I don't care about going fast. I don't like any of those things. I'm it's slow. more about momentum and risk. Yes. And I think that that's the thing is it makes it makes like Formula One exciting to people who don't care about it, which is include, includes me. I like think that the game inspires feelings that most board games would only dare to dream of. Mm. Yes, that's right. So if you have a deviance in your life, get them heat. 
Icky is for the person who is deeply not a deviant. You <laughs> thought I just went, that's gives icky. You, gives you the icky. <laughs> uh, this is for the person who just likes a really good solid Euro game. Big, dry, quite boring, but very, very, very fun. Uh, this is a really good game where you're moving little pieces around a street uh, in Edo era Japan, mm -hmm. trying to trade, trying to put some little people in shops and tempt others yeah into your goods you're trying to get other people to come and g come to your shops and do you business get bonuses, business but then other people don't want to do that because it's a game and people are competitive and yes. you're like just come to my shop please the reason they don't want to come to your shop as well is because the person working in the shop will become better at their job and yep. then eventually maybe they'll get to retire yes. so you not visiting their shop is actually pushing them like into servitude for even longer weird game when you think about it for more than a minute but it's good it's, it's got, very good it's also got an expansion which i think is fine Heard it here first. You heard it here first. That's games. That's all the games we have. We've just recommended one, two, three, four, five. Loads of games. Loads. That more you than could five. Buy for your family. Like seven or eight. For your socks. For yourself. For the people in your game that love life. Life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. What do you want for Christmas, Tom? I want. To a big roast dinner. I want bigger socks. Ooh. I hope we get what we want. You want a sock that will fit Ra inside of it. I want a sock full of roast dinner now. Mm. I need to be put on a list. The only country pub that serves your roast dinner in a sock. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.